Thank you for clicking on this video about player vending in Fallout 76. I imagine that you're expecting this video to finally answer the exact prices you should buy and sell at, clearing up the pricing debate once and for all. Well, sorry to disappoint, but I can't help you there. No one can. Value and worth are highly subjective, and will change depending on who you ask. What this means in a practical sense is that your vendor prices will never be perfect. Instead, what I'm going to try and achieve here is to give you more of an idea on how to price an item based off a number of qualifying factors. No individual pricing guide will ever be right, but if you understand how the general system works, then you should be able to master player vending in no time. Before we head fully into that though, let's just quickly go over the fundamentals of what player vending is and how it's used, so that we're on the same page. To build a vending machine, head into your camp build menu and scroll along until you reach the Vendors tab. As you can see here, the vending machine is nice and cheap to craft, only requiring a handful of steel and wood. You can make a maximum of 4 vending machines at your camp, and each has 30 slots to place items, meaning you can have a maximum of 120 different items for sale. Please note that's different items. If you want to sell 500.45 bullets all at the same price, you can stack them together and they only take up one slot. Vending machines require free power each, and once powered up, your count will show up to everyone on the map with this symbol in a gold colour. Other players with connected vendors will show up with a green version of the same symbol. By hovering over the symbol you can have a quick gander at what's being sold, something that can prove quite helpful for potential buyers. The final point of note to go over is that items sold from these vending machines only yield you 90% of a sale price. What this means is that if you place an item in your vendor for 100 caps, then the person who purchases it will spend the full 100, but you only receive 90 caps. We currently have no idea where the 10% sale tax goes, but the top theory so far is that Todd Howard is currently hoarding them deep within the heart of Blackreach. With the fundamentals covered, we can now get onto the advice section, starting with what you want to sell. There's a simple rule to follow here. Only sell items that are worth buying. I know this sounds pretty obvious, but way too often I see players selling items that just aren't worth purchasing. Basic weapon and armor items almost always aren't worth selling. The vast majority of players only use legendary items and aren't going to want to buy something that's objectively worse. Likewise, selling legendaries that are a low level aren't going to be as desirable as max level items. Whenever you think about putting something in your vendor, consider if it's an item you place any real value into. If not, don't sell it. The items I focus on selling are high quality legendaries, plans and recipes, ammo, and junk. Plans and recipes are the items I normally look out for, and I'll often head to other camps to try and obtain plans I've yet to learn. As for ammo and junk, these are items which players will constantly be using up, and always need more of, often in a pinch. On top of this, rare items are also worth selling, if you can obtain them. These could be from limited time events, such as the Tenderizer, or rare drop rate outfits, like the Hunter's Longcoat. If something is difficult to obtain, it will always have a high value to collectors, so is worthwhile selling if you don't fancy keeping it for yourself. I would also advise having a variety of items for sale at your camp. If someone is looking just for weapons, and you're only selling plans, then they're not likely to stop by. If you have some of each item though, then you're likely to have more potential customers stop by for a quick browse. The question now is how much should you sell these items for? Obviously, I can't give you exact prices for every single item out there. If you want price checks, then heading to Discord or Reddit is your best bet. What I can show you though, are some examples of price points for items in my own vending machines. Let's start off with legendaries, as they can often be the trickiest thing to fairly price up. First item to show off is this level 50 instigating power fist, on sale for 500 caps. This, I feel, is a perfectly fair price for the item. Instigating is a solid effect to have on a power fist, helping you get one shot hits easier with an unarmed character. The weapon is also at the highest possible level, making it a more worthwhile purchase. As it is though, it's only a 1 star legendary and power fists aren't in all that high a demand, so I haven't set the price too ridiculously high. 500 caps is a very modest amount for someone looking for a strong unarmed weapon, so I fully expect this item to sell at its current price. Let's now look at my highest priced item, a Junkies Gorse Rifle, currently at 5000 caps. The reason I've set this at such a higher price is that it's a free star with powerful effects for a Gorse Rifle a weapon which is sought after by a fair few players. 
The Junkies effect, combined with the extra VATS crit damage, added to a high single shot damage weapon makes this a potentially incredibly powerful weapon for the right player. A freestyle legendary on its own isn't suddenly worth 5k caps though. Just take a look at this Junkies power fist. Sure, it's got the Junkies effect and a couple of other decent legendary effects, but the item is at level 40, not level 50, meaning it's actually 17 points lower damage than a base level 50 power fist. That said, it still is a decent weapon overall, and I've got it set at 2.5k, a price which, honestly, I think might be a little high. As it is though, I feel confident that it can sell at this point, so I'm giving it a trial run. If it doesn't sell within the next couple of months, then I might decide to lower it down to a flat 2k and see if it shifts then. Keep in mind that you can change your prices whenever you feel like it. If you've got no space in your stash and need to get rid of some heavy items quickly, then consider cranking down the price of them to be a good deal for anyone who stops by. They get a bargain, and you get more space for whatever else you need. On the flip side, if you have more stash space than you know what to do with but are low on caps, maybe try raising prices. Sure, things won't be flying off the shelf so fast, but the items that do go will make you more money. Legendaries aren't all that sold though, so let's take a look at a few other items. Plans are also a popular vending item. You can see here that I'm selling the majority of my plans for just 10 caps, despite the value listed on them being as high as 500 caps. When it comes to plans and recipes, you should almost never be offering them up for their listed value. Normally I'll have them set to about 10% of the listed value, unless I know they are particularly common or rare. A common plan, such as Ultracite Power Armor Limb plans, I sell at a huge discount, as I just want to shift it quickly. If I get something a little more rare though, such as a jetpack plan, then I might sell it for 20-50% of a listed value, depending on just how likely it is someone will already know it. Keep in mind with plans that you're only going to be selling ones which people haven't already learnt, so don't even bother with the most basic ones. Nobody wants to shell out for the 11 copies of single action revolver ivory grip. Throw them on the ground and move on. Two other big sellers I often try to shift are ammo and junk. The vast majority of these I sell for one cap per item. Want a 0.45 bullet? That'll be a cap. Want 10 antiseptic? 10 caps. Not every type of ammo and junk is worth the same though. A few of them, such as 0.38 ammo, are unlikely to shift at all, even for just a single cap each. The slightly rarer variants though, such as Ballistic Fiber, can probably be doubled or tripled in price and still sell to most players in need. Think to yourself which of these you have the most use for, and price accordingly. As it is, my melee character sells every ammo type, except for cores, at one cap each, as he never uses guns so all that ammo is wasted for him. May as well just focus on shifting it fast rather than having it eat up stash space. Finally we move on to rare and unusual items, and here I really can't help you, as these are even more subjective than the legendaries we mentioned earlier. A Hunter's Longcoat doesn't give any actual character benefit, it's little more than a bit of bling, so getting one single price is impossible, as different people will pay different amounts for it. With these items, I'd honestly advise setting them a little too high and seeing how things go. If they sell quickly, consider raising the price higher in the future. If they struggle to sell, maybe lower them just a little. Keep tweaking the price point until it reaches a stage where it makes maximum profit while still selling in a short time frame. One thing to consider with a lot of these items are how much they sell to the robot vendors already in-game. I often see mutation serums on sale everywhere from 100 caps to 1000 caps each. 1000 caps is honestly pretty pricey when so many people are selling them cheaper. 100 caps is way too cheap if you're looking to make a profit though, as serums sell for way more than that to in-game vendors. Personally, I keep mine at 500 caps when I place them in the player vending as then I make a similar amount as I would have from selling them normally. That's honestly all the important parts of player vending covered, with just that information you should hopefully start having some more success with your vending machines. Before I call this video though, here's a few general tips to help out those of you who tend to stick around to the end of videos. Tip 1. Pay attention to how many caps you have. Fallout 76 has a 30k cap limit. If you've got 29k caps already, then you don't want to be selling a bunch of high ticket items before you spend a little of your own cash. Any money you earn over the cap is wasted, so don't stay too close to the limit for too long. Tip 2. Consider your camp location. Certain regions and areas have higher numbers of players show up. Put your camp in the forest, near Vault 76, and you can expect a lot of low level players who might not have many caps but are more likely to purchase basic items. Have your camp near the White Springs, and you should have a good number of players show up, 
but there's likely to be a lot of competition nearby, so you can't put your prices too high or people will just go straight to the camp around the corner. A little bonus side tip to go along with this is to make sure other players can easily find your vending machines and use them without struggle. Don't hide them away in a maze of walls and doors, and don't crowd them in a ton of items. You want people to find your vendors as easily as possible, or else there's no point in having them there. The final tip is to check your camp on the map before logging out. If someone is there, try to leave it a minute just in case we're about to purchase something. This goes double for anyone with floating camps. If you log out and the prospective buyer is suddenly plummeting to their death, then you can bet that's a customer who is never coming back. Obviously, you don't have to stick around for too long, and if you're heading out to do something important, then do so. You don't want to be late for work just because you wanted to earn a few extra in-game bucks. And there we have it, my guide to player vending. Hopefully you all found that helpful, if so, then leave a like on the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and if you want more content like this, then make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you never miss an upload, as YouTube isn't a fan of recommending my content. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.